Okay, and we're live. Welcome back to the We Value and Few podcast. I'm back from my nap. It's Slapshot. Crossfire's here. Raptor. Blackbeard. And today will be a bit of an interesting episode because I'm a co-host. And basically so is Raptor and basically so is Crossfire. Yeah, we're taking a back seat on this one. And uh, we're going to leave this one to you, Blackbeard. And we'll just add in things as we go. Yeah. But, uh, all right. Well, the topic is combatives. Something you have quite a bit more experience than us. So uh, it's been I've been doing it for a couple years. Raptor, did you have any? In... Yes, I did. Okay. But we'll, we'll get but, into that. Yeah. We'll get but into before that. we get into that, we got some uh, some links. Crossfire, you wanna throw those in there? Some Lincoln Longs. So this, <laughs> Lincoln okay. Long. So of course you can find uh, are on YouTube right now, and, or if you're listening to this uh, post sh- post live show and you're on one of the many podcast platforms, you can find us at YouTube.WeValiantFew. Dot com. We're also looking into moving to different platforms for that. Um, you can check us out on our Rumble. We just started that. We're starting to upload our backlog of videos to there. And you can check us out on BitChute. So we're going to be in both of those places. Uh, a lot of places. A lot of places, yeah. You can also check us out on Instagram. Instagram's getting pretty decent. You can uh, see updates about the show like tonight. We're starting the show a bit later. Um, so you can see all the updates for the show on there. And that is uh, at WeValiantFew on Instagram. Also, you can reach out to us, and th- this one I wanted to leave for last, on our Discord, with a big asterisk beside that. Um, Discord.wevaliantfew.com. Now, I don't know how much, uh, have you guys heard about the Discord mer- or acquisition? Yes, the Microsoft purchasing Discord. I don't like that. Neither do I. Uh, so we may be looking into an alternative platform uh, as a result of that. So stay tuned for that. We'll have a convenient link for that. Whenever and if ever it happens. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Juicy. Uh, but as of right now, discord.wevalentfew.com, uh, should we change it, we will just forward the link to wherever we're going to be going from there to there. And that's that. Uh, but I think it's pretty much wraps all the links. You can find all the links on our website, wevalentfew.com. They're all aggregated there. So Yeah, if you forget anything, just you know, type in our name on Google and you know we'll probably show up there somewhere. So I think next we will go into our current events. But... I also wanted to talk about some, maybe not so much current events, but uh, some of the stuff that we've done recently because we've kind of done a lot of stuff in terms of like as a podcast together recently. Do you want to jump into that f- first, or do you want to do current events first? Well, I feel like current events should be first, and then we can jump into that because that can well, kind of go into combatives, maybe. I mean, that's fine. Good transition into like the whole training thing that I, you know, kind of. I mean, we've done other stuff too. I still like the. Uh, we'll get into it, but we'll get into it. We'll start with the current events first, I think. So, does anyone have any current events that they want to particularly start out with? Because I got a couple. It's all you, Slapshot. All, you, then, all right, all right. I'll start out with one. So, Joe Biden gave a speech recently. Oh, God, we're going into this. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start out with that one. And Head first. I, I don't want to quote him because the quote's not very quote-worthy. <laughs> but uh, I had a YouTube-friendly man. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, and, uh, 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 it's all right. <laughs> That's basically cool, yeah. <laughs> So he forgot his train of thought. Didn't even know where he was taking the, the sentence. He had a I train of thought to begin with. The guy, he is just not a good speaker and it shows and it's, he's never been a good speaker. I've seen, I saw Robin Williams, uh, comedy skit of him basically talking crap on Joe Biden, like, Years ago. Hey, don't make fun of Joe Biden's stutter. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that and everything to do with just he does not talk well. And it doesn't pose or it doesn't help show him as a strong leader at all. Just remember Words, what he said about Joe. poor kids. <laughs> oh, the Words, poor kids. Joe. Words. Um, no, I mean, well, well um, anybody can take the, take a look at that and see where that goes or what he said. His dog he, also bit another person. Yeah, I saw that. That was a couple weeks yeah. ago. Um, I think it's inter- I think something interesting to talk about if we're on the Biden subject would be the absolute calamity the border is right now. Oh yeah. Do you guys but, see any of the coverage on that? Oh, I my know goodness. Dan Crenshaw has been posting nonstop about it, probably because he's a Tim Texas. Kennedy. It's also been all over. This that. is my backyard. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, the, it, it is just. It's just crazy how it's like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, all the border stuff here. Uh, it's. It's. Uh. 
uh, you know, Trump supporter, da 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 da. And then immediately it's like, oh yeah, Biden's border is gonna be a lot better, and it is like monumentally worse in every conceivable well, it's way. It's probably like more so. May maybe the people going over the border are emboldened because of a Democrat candidate. Uh, that that's probably part of it. Uh, I well, not probably. I guarantee that's part of it. But it's just crazy that there's no coverage of it. Oh yeah, I mean, Very quite fast. honestly, I've literally stopped watching the news of any kind, just because I don't care anymore. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much do <laughs> we're pretty much doomed. As like it is. whatever, I will focus on my stuff, preparing myself, paying attention to like important like spark notes of whatever's going on, and I just I can't be bothered anymore. L listening to the endless news cycle of like bullcrap basically you can't over get every now. day for two they run the same thing for two weeks and then it's something new and they're pushing gun control this week and the border's freaking falling apart next week and it, like it's I literally like whole, just i like the whole like they'll be playing it and then like all of them start talking at the same time it's like oh great and they're all like in unison <laughs> i'm just out so tired of it moving yeah. moving on to wrap up his his speech that he gave though I forget what day this was. I think this was like March 24th or 25th, somewhere in there, that range. And towards the, he has this list of notes of like points to talk about, or maybe even the whole printed speech in front of them for, for of in front of Joe for all I freaking know. But at the very end of the speech, like he had like scripted questions that were to be asked to him. Like there, like there were literal names to call out. Like he didn't even know what point of his oh, notes he was not on. Not his speech, his press conference. Yeah, right. Oh, right. okay. Yeah, no, I did see that where they actually had the literal call on this person from this newspaper. Here's a picture of them. Yeah, like he, I, I think oh, unknowingly yeah, yeah, yeah. or accidentally, yeah, like looked that. down. He's like, oh, uh, so and so from CNN or something like that. Uh, and then like looked up there, like he didn't even be like questions. And then like you know, obviously like you know to act upon, like act, like acted out, and you know, she was gonna like raise her hand so he could call on her. So that he, he already knew what question he was going to get asked. He's not even a good figurehead. <laughs> he he, he, he <laughs> can't even be a figurehead, right? Exactly. It's like fine Waldo. But, like, he just... The, the president should be a strong figure of the country, and he just looks so weak. At least competent. <laughs> he does not look competent. <laughs> I'm si no, I'm saying that's, like, that's at least something you should be. It's funny, because I tried going on Google before I came here tonight. To try to find the quote from his his press his press his, uh, his sorry I can't speak tonight. words yeah haven't done this in two weeks his press conference on him stuttering and I couldn't find it and like, him forgetting his thoughts I couldn't find it on Google at least what? at least at the top of the searches so there's something to be shown well, right there I mean we're basically just we are taking that dead horse and beating it relentlessly. Because we've said that all the same, it's the same stuff. Media is covering up stuff that they don't want to see. They're showing what they want you to see, which is like the mass shooting and this and all the reasons to be scared and why they need more security. They're talking about uh, COVID passports. Yeah, I saw and that And all the man. freaking insanity that ensues from that. And meanwhile, there's all these other things going on that aren't getting any any coverage. So speaking of things that might not be getting so many coverage or much coverage, to jump into my next current event, did you guys hear about that Indian Uber Eats driver in Chicago? Well, well, I got shot. No, that sorry, shot someone. Sorry, Chicago. That just happens. Uh, <laughs> you got to be a hair bit more specific there. So clearly, you guys haven't seen any media press about this much. Dude, I don't watch the news. Okay, I know you don't watch the news, and quite frankly, neither do I, but I saw a headline about this in one research. location. So there is this, I believe it's in Chicago, don't quote me on that, but it's, it was an Indian Uber Eats driver, and he was carjacked by two African-American teenage girls. Oh, oh I, I did see, I did see that, the yeah. coverage on this. Okay, yeah. So Is that the one that flipped? Yes uh the what? girl the what one girl that? in the front seat tried hopping over and like hopping over into the path into the driver's seat and stepped on the gas while the indian uber each driver was half in and half out of his car they took off down the road side swiped the car on the road and tried to make a bend and they rolled the car car was on its side the guy recording it on the side of the street ran down the street to the scene and the Indian Uber each driver was on the sidewalk, face down, like about 
10 feet from the car and the girls were like crawling out of the top totally fine there were some bystanders helping them out one of the girls was like complaining like, oh like oh, my phone my phone's still in there it's like the guy on the camera is just like like no like they just try to carjack and like detain them like don't let them go anywhere and i just want to point out like is like eight like asian hate still like a thing going on in the, in the media oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. And we're not talking about these two African American teenage girls that tried carjacking this guy. He's like sixty five. He had like a family. Well, came here from did, India. Did he, did he die? Yeah, he died. Oh man. Oh. So here's the here's another fun statistic. So every race, the most like race on race, or the for instance, white people kill the most white people, black people kill the most black people. But do you know who kills the most Asian people? No, actually, no. I don't. Black people do don't know why or i don't know why that's part of the statistic but that is the statistic so you know how i look at it people kill people they I'm, do. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look at it just like morgan freeman does i'm gonna look at you whenever you st- i'm gonna call you if you kill me you were a person and you killed me yeah, well, yeah like a I, man or does, a woman does killed it me. like does it piss <laughs> yeah. you guys off as much as it pisses me off when they're like oh yeah well black on black crime it's like dude i don't care what the color of the person's skin is it doesn't matter crime is crime it, crime, it is crime, crime is crime <laughs> yeah it's like it's like they're adding in this extra thing like, just to make it a racial problem yeah. when, when you know it, it shouldn't it doesn't matter. have to be now the area i think is something to take into effect like if you're in a chicago suburb yeah that's gonna that's gonna take an effect. It's, but it's not the color of someone's skin. It's the it's the quality of the area. Yeah, the... that's regardless of the, what the person's like. You know. Right. We brought this up. I believe it might have been the, the last episode I was here. I'm gonna keep ripping on myself for sleeping through my alarm. That good. Goddamn last. Good. Episode. You should. Um, but I believe it was like what, that interview with Mike Wallace and Morgan Freeman on Morgan Freeman's opinion on Black History Month. And Morgan Freeman told him, I believe it was towards the end, somewhere like that. He's like. I will look at you as a man when you stop referring to me as a black man, and I'll stop referring to you as a white man. We are men. Something to that effect. Like, we are both men. He got, like, five. He got like 500 respect points for me for that one. Like, yeah, seriously, though? seriously. Um, but, yeah, do you, um, do you have any other current events? No, that's all I got. I don't. I don't have any. Uh, mine is just the, the talking points that I would like to bring up. So, uh, you, you're good there, you buddy. Go right on it, buddy. Right. one with the current events. What so, the heck? Listen, we have more important things to discuss right we now. We have more pressing matters. <laughs> we have more pressing matters. So, we do. Uh, last weekend, we uh, were a part of a local benefit for um, firefighters and uh, businesses that had burned down locally. Um, and we donated a basket of like some survival gear like life straw med kit stuff like that stuff that like we want other people to see as well as uh like pocket constitution because we did the whole season on the constitution why it's important um and just like helped out around there help sell tickets and whatnot uh it was like part of a chinese auction and that was just something cool that i thought that uh i would like to share giving back or at least just trying to give back uh for some of us yeah, I was on the administrative team that actually was running the benefit, and that's how we got into it. And the uh, the benefit itself actually ended up being really super successful as a uh, you know as a whole. So we're we're really glad that turned out good. Um, it's nice to get nice to actually get out and talk to people. Yeah, get out oh, and talk goodness. to people. Get out, just see. Do you see that? And yeah. I think it's it's really important um, that you know we always talk about oh what can you do to help help this or how can you prepare this, but it's. There's a certain element, too, that I believe is really important, and that's to show that we are here for the community as well. Not just not just our literal community, but the metaphorical yeah, community. Yeah, the community we're as a whole, yeah. Yeah, and, the, uh, the com- and, by, and community of like-minded people, yep. um, which I think is super important. And that would just help reinforce that. I mean, everybody had a great day. I didn't have a single person come up to me that was complaining. Everybody was having a fantastic day. Yeah, it was a fun time. I, I think it was great. But that and the other um, the event last the, uh, right after that. Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then, as well as that, we also, so, a couple podcasts ago, we talked about Airsoft and how it's good for training. Well, um, that Sunday, we also went to an Airsoft event. Um, and in that, uh, this is the first time that we've had, I would say, a substantial amount of people out to play Airsoft since I was a kid. And we, ha- I would say, me, um, Blackbeard, and Slapshot were all there, as well as some other people. And we basically just tried to implement, tried to use a lot of the communication skills that we've been talking about, tried to um, 
do the the shooting moving and stuff like that and just tried to get as much out of it as we could and besides obviously the the re kids that we talked about and the um some people like not playing the sport correctly like not calling their hits and such i think uh it was an overall win for everyone involved to be fair i do I will give some of those people that didn't call their hits a benefit of the doubt because no, it was I a won't. bit of a colder day. Might have not felt the BB hit you. I don't know about that. I literally dumped the mag into a dude, and he was just like, okay. There are definitely, <laughs> there are definitely some In wide open. He, like, the guy was dead to rights. But regardless, it was still a good time, and that's still a good place for us to like get our reach. And we, whenever we were there, we were even talking to people and because like, we were wearing our full plate carriers with plates. Um, like I was wearing my T-Rex arms hat and I had a couple of people come up to me and talk to me about that and just like saying, Hey, like we're more into real steel stuff and we're using this as training. And they're like, Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. And maybe I have like someone in the military or stuff like that. Did you bring business cards? Uh, I didn't. Lost. Did you, 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 did you talk to, did you give those guys business cards that, uh, I did. Oh, (laughs) not a lost opportunity. Hey, good. Okay. Th- so this whole Hicks- opportunity was not lost in me. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, but yeah, so I have no idea what you're talking about. But um, yeah, we had a good time. We got some good training in, and we're looking forward to doing more of it. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's the whole idea. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to bring some coverage of that possibly well, in the future. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, the plan is is or I want to make some video content of that and some breakdown videos and stuff. And once we get like the camera equipment required to do that kind of stuff, that's basically my goal. I did want to add on to like the whole scenario. I feel like this was super good for us. Like, cause whenever we were out there, like I thought about like what we had talked about, and I was criticizing myself and you two you know inside my own head i was like yeah this is like we're communicating really well and you know we're moving decently well and like it just seemed like in the first event like it was like us like the first game i guess was sort of like us like sort of figuring out each other like working who works really well with who who's communicates really good with who and then after we figured that out and the ice was sort of broken, like that second game was super good for us. Yeah, like it was a lot we, we moved so efficiently. We talked efficiently. Like the communication was like really good. Like communication really won us that in, in terms of us as a as a squad. Well, that, I, well, that was the whole goal of why. I mean, I, I mean, for those for those who are listening, I didn't get a chance to make it. I was preoccupied with the with the previous commitment that I had. Um, but you guys went down. I mean, that was the big reason you guys went down was the communication. Sure, there's the weapon handling that comes with airsoft, but we already talked that that's kind of there's only so much of a parallel you can make. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close, there. but the communication was the key thing that you guys wanted. Communication to and teamwork and working together yeah. as a group and a, in an environment that's safe. Because I mean, obviously, with real steel firearms, you're not fighting real things; you're fighting targets, and everyone kind of is. I mean, as they should be wary of the other people and i mean one thing that i made sure that i was doing at airsoft is making sure like i wasn't flagging people the weapon was down and away whenever i wasn't using it i wasn't like you know flagging and all that stuff but yeah overall it was a good success it took us like i would say the first round it took us some getting used to our communication skills i still i definitely think the communication can be better and more it could be better Um, but i think for our, so to say, first running go at this, I think it was relatively good for. Yeah, I mean, everybody's we, like sort of like first go at this with every you know us trying to do this together. Yeah, I think it was. And I also a saw success. I also saw a lot of people following our lead. Oh yeah, there's definitely a handful of kids that were following us. Like they saw us like using comms together, and like they're just like oh, they like, were automatically are... drawn yeah, to us. Like, like yeah. flies on shit. Yeah, we were, we were using like the Walker Razor headsets with the walkie talkie attachments. So, like we were all communicating with each other, and like these kids were just like, oh my god, like they're using like yeah, we were... walkies together. Like <laughs> the one cool thing was we were uh, sending 
there was like an objective where we had to basically get a coded message which, which, was, which was basically actually the second game yeah way. which was basically like drawn symbols uh and we had to go somewhere have someone radio us what the symbols were and give them to the ref who was in our base so um one of you guys was over there radioing us um the the actual symbols and then another one of us was drawing them out on a piece of paper and we handed them to the ref and they were right so I mean that was just a cool thing that we had we had the ability to do that other people did not. There's a symbol here, yeah. It's a circle with line. That's actually that's what a, it was. 100% like, what I it can, was. I can, no, I swear to God. So <laughs> what was it? A lightning <laughs> bolt? It was a lightning yeah, I'll tell, bolt. I'll tell you exactly what it was. So I was the one. I was the one that radioed it to you, Raptor, in base. So it was a lightning bolt top left, cloud top right, heart in the center, and it was a circle. Sun. No, no, yeah, no. It was a sun and a moon. Bottom left, yeah. bottom right. With a heart in the middle. Yeah. But yeah, but that was just one of the cool things. You won the game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got po- we scored points hey, we on scored that points one. On That's it. awesome. And wh- I I do want to make a point that like the communication skills were super, super important for that second round because where those objectives were that we had to communicate back to base were in a very, very intense spot of the map it was it was it was about the midpoint where both teams kind of were trying to like fight for control of it was what was called the prison so there was a lot of tangos on the other side of the prison from us so we were trying to call them out it's like oh we got two guys behind pile of logs right side prison you know, yeah, we, I wasn't even a part of that. I was no, on, I was at base. Well, I was well, at base talking to the rep, like trying to get the yeah, right. information got, to the rep. Smoked. Right. You know, but you guys before that were down the hill from the prison, get pinned down. Oh yeah, like, was, yeah. I'm just like, I would like to help you, but if I run out, I'm gonna get <laughs> shot from those guys hiding behind the log pile by I'm the going prison to die. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome so, to the gulag. So instead, oh, what I did boy. was I pushed in prison and helped help two of our re kids push in prison, and we took over the prison together. Were they really re kids then? Like okay, well, one of them was wearing the uh, the Ravens hoodie. Dude, that kid, that kid oh, was that, that kid had balls. If that kid is somehow listening to shout out, you're an OG, dude. You were, <laughs> you were like, you are one the of the real up. MVPs. Dude, he was like, he was HK calls. slapping. Yeah, he was. <laughs> dude, he was taking point. Like, he was making call outs. Like, H- and, HK slapping. That guy probably plays CSGO. Yeah. You can tell. <laughs> he April, played a lot of Call of Duty. Was he yelling in Russian? No. no. <laughs> then, he, then it's Call of Duty. Okay, but hang on, hang on. I think it was so, CSGO. <laughs> that's, no, that's the Russian. Oh. They, they yell Russian all the time. Okay, but uh, the, the scenario, these, like, what we're doing are these, like, they're called, like, the scenario events that this, uh, this, this place has that take place. So the scenario was taking down the mobs, and we were on the mob team, but this month there is an event. It's a Call of Duty event. Oh so, boy. Oh if you boy. can imagine how many re kids were at this event, there's probably gonna be like three times. Well, it was as also many. downpouring. That's that's another thing. Oh, it was yeah. downpouring, raining the whole time, which yeah. was like, hey, train. That was another fact. It was train, so cool. Train how you oh fight. Oh my gosh, that was your, so uh, cool. How did your new batteries hold up with that? Fine. They were fine. Nice. Totally fine. I that, nice. So that that's. It's gonna be good. At first, when it was raining, I'm just like, God, it's gonna be so miserable. But like when we were out there, like it was just so immersive. I'm just like, this is actually like really yeah, it fun. was like, I mean, it was definitely downpouring. Had our things on, and it was just dude. I was getting shot at trying to run from cover to cover, and I just saw this giant pile of mud right beside one of the railroad huts, which was like where they were like railroad tie like yeah. huts, and I'm just like, oh god, like so I just like prepared for impact and i just like got on one knee and i slid to cover it was so sweet like, we could just slide <laughs> from cover to cover Let me oh, baseball God. slide ready that's what it was it was yeah. freaking rad i mean it was a great workout it was good for working teamwork and it was good for i mean honestly it was just an all-around good time uh, yeah this is like what i had also talked about with like you'd figure out what your fitness level was like is running around like that you play could, you definitely oh, yeah. feel it I, mean, I, was, I was I was actually kind of sore the first day after. No, I was sore two days because it's always worse the second day. I kind of felt it the second day. I just yeah, wanted you wanted to be cool, right? Well, <laughs> there is a recap of what we've been doing with the airsoft event. Uh, any other team events that uh, I think that's pretty much. I think that's pretty much it recently. No, that's that's all we did pretty much. But to recap that. It wasn't about, you know, calling your hits, but it was more so the team dynamic of it. And I definitely think we grew as a team. I mean, we called our hits. Let's, let's, like, be, oh, let's okay, be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah we like, called our hits. But sure. Like, Other people to, were not calling their hits. To it any listeners, if you're worried about people not calling their hits, that's not don't let that it's about. Don't let that impact your 
your training experience. Exactly. Just just blast them. A couple, be, just blast them. Yeah, more. you just shoot them more. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> or you pull be, out the grenade launcher. That's you know, what I have from the boomer. The you shot, know, this is the shot I would stick. say from you know the, my paintball years. This is when you start to play murder ball. When you shoot them oh. until they call out. No, that's what. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. Until it hurts too much. Yeah. So, so you. So this is actually a, a great side thing. Since since you're Mr. Paintball. What was your opinion on the airsoft run? Um, I enjoyed it because of the weapon mechanics and how closely it is to the actual rifles and you know sidearms, whatever. I didn't carry a sidearm, but I, I mean, he it, was playing around with the MCX and the M17. Yeah, with that yeah, guy, yeah. That, that, that solidified <laughs> my my uh, choice in airsoft firearm. Oh, remember that was the thing I said was the biggest difference is that just. Size wise, yeah, they're designed to be more accurate. Yeah, like and, it, it was, it was a close to like all of them are pretty close to like a one to one model. I mean, they get as close as they can legally. Yeah, but I did notice like with the whole calling your hits thing, like that is so much more prominent in airsoft to people not call their hits than it is in paintball I, because one, yeah, you have agree. a visual mark, two, it's a lot bigger and it hurts. A little bit more. Well, I'd say a lot more because <laughs> you're leaving welts domes. on you're leaving welts on their bodies that are bruises. He has a welt on his face. Oh yeah, I have a nice. You get mark welts from nose. airsoft. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you might but, not yeah, but, because we were wearing plate carriers. Uh, yeah, but, but I'm saying it, that's that's not the same as getting domed with a paintball. That's well, true. yeah. Well, if you get hit, <laughs> if you get hit in anywhere <laughs> in the arm oh, or man. anything that that wasn't a plate carrier, you would probably have a a, a bruise of some sort. Like <laughs> you got have a concussion. <laughs> Dang. Hey, yeah, but uh, yeah. well, I think that I mean that was a half an hour run into what we've been up to yeah and that was my first airsoft match oh even better uh we do have I, I think it's i think it's a good point to throw this in that we are uh this this episode we have next week's episode is going to be another real talk where we do unscripted and have some random people on talk about random stuff and then following that we will have our last episode of season two we'll be doing a uh Either a two- or a three-week break. I'm thinking a two-week break. We'll post on Instagram to be sure. Uh, and then we'll be starting into season three. So stay tuned for season three. got a lot of stuff planned for it. Um, and you know, like I said, just have to stay tuned for it. So, yes, I know you want to say it. Go ahead. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in, in the, uh, you know, current news. And, you know, like that guy that got carjacked, unfortunately. Sometimes you just got to be ready. And you got to wake up! <laughs> it is wake-up time. So no saying- more sleep. So are you saying? Yeah, uh, no more sleep, no more sleep, slap shot, no more sleep, no more. Sleep. You must till Brooklyn. No, that's a give up song. sleep forever. <laughs> Not sponsored by the Beastie Boys. Yeah, really. Uh, so so what happens once you wake up? Are you, you learn- are you woke? Uh, you're based. <laughs> uh, you yes, woke? you're based. No, but you're no, 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 but you're immersed in some combatives. So without further ado, Blackbeard. About- hey. Some black, some of this black beard stuff. We've, all right. we've been demoted to co-host. Welcome to the spotlight, buddy. No pressure. Nah, it, this one's pretty simple. But before I jump into this, I kind of want to ask everybody what any experiences they have or training that they have. So we'll start with you, Slapshot. Um, like if you've ever been in a fight, close to a fight, you know, have any training whatsoever. I punched a kid in the nose once on the bus. Um, good job. I <laughs> hey, to be fair, I was standing up to some other little kid. All right. All right, good job. Uh, I've been in like four hockey fights. Did so, you win said hockey fights? Game. I won three. Did you drop the gloves? No, because we wore cages. Oh. I did drop one of one of my gloves though, because I pulled dro- his cage open. Did and you got drop some- the gun? <laughs> <laughs> um. Other than that, no, I don't have any like real world fighting experience besides that one day that we trained you, you and uh, Panther. Panther. Panther, that's right. I was, I wasn't gonna say his name. I forgot his call sign. Uh, you and Panther had given us a little bit of insight. That was just a schmeckle of what you will learn. Schmeckle's currency. Get it mm. right. <laughs> Small speck. 
A speck of dust. A speck of dust of the wisdom I could potentially know. The dust of wisdom. (laughs) The (laughs) dust of wisdom. Moving on. Moving on. uh, Crossfire. Crossfire. What do you got in the world of combatives? Actually, if you want to know the truth, when I was younger, I actually did get in a lot of fights. Uh, With with me, with my cousin. Oh, man. We would would actually, like, fist fight pretty hard, like, regularly. Um, This is good. Yeah, and... uh, I feel like a Sith Lord right now. I <laughs> most of the time I did I did win those. Uh, a couple times that, that I didn't, he would like he would like uh, he'd be sitting there not doing anything, and he would just come and like sucker punch you right in the side of the head, L- like 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 total dick, you know. Um, it would be that way. After I mean after the last time we got into it real super bad, and it kind of just never happened again because it was it was it was bad. Like, was it bloody? Uh yeah, a little bit. Did it feel good? Did you feel invigorated? It doesn't. No, I didn't. Because I'm beating your family is yeah, probably not the greatest feeling no, in the it's, world. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, but I mean, but I mean, that was like again. That was that was many years ago. Um, and uh, I mean, now we're 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 fun. close as hell. To, huh? to, yeah. to no, jump I back would in. say that. Well, but, you're at a mutual agreement. Yeah, you're like it'll come in. I mean, like yeah, let's go for a beer or something. You know, it's like and we're totally fine. Yeah, right. But, as rain. To jump back yeah. in, whenever I was younger, I did actually take karate. I only did it to like I was a camo belt. I didn't even hit black belt. Camo belt. Yeah. What does that belt, even mean? That is a that you took you took crappy American karate. You didn't yeah. take real karate. Dude, no, it was I. Dude, I could not even <laughs> like tell black, you one thing. Black I belt from that. takes that was so years long ago. and years and years of training, and you have and. You know what? I'll get into that. We'll we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. The stream finished. What the hell happened there? Unsure. Did you just? Are we still recording? It, on it literally it literally just happened. Yeah. Okay. Are we still recording on backup? Yeah, backup is recording. Okay. Hey. So, uh, we will just mark. Do we want to continue live stream yeah. and just call it part two? Or just no? We're just gonna keep. We're just gonna keep talking. Okay. okay. Uh. So that way, like again, because I'm gonna upload this here to the, uh, to the actual like the podcast platforms, and they'll be able to just they'll be able to take it, and I'll just be able, or I'll just uh, upload this video straight to YouTube as it is, and we'll call it we'll call it out a day. Who knows what happened? Uh, YouTube has been kind of screwy lately. Like you, you saw when we were setting up all the all the stuff was messed up, and uh, the network here in the studio has been absolutely off the rails today. It has been on and off and on and off and on and off. Hmm. So there's all kinds of problems with the network. So, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, we can keep we can keep talking. I'll try to get the live stream back up, uh, but it doesn't really matter to me. Okay, so Bla- uh, not Blackbeard. I'm sorry, Raptor. Your experience, sir. My experience. Uh, I mean, whenever I was in JRTC, we did a bunch of uh, combatives days. It was never more than like day one of what you would learn in like jujitsu, like learning the positions, mount at. Uh, all that stuff okay so you were um, learning the bare essentials yeah bare and then uh, obviously in the army i did some combatives um i didn't get in any fights but i was very close to getting into fights especially whenever i was in qatar um because there was new year's eve where everyone was allowed four drinks instead of three and everyone was off their rocker mm. um and First, I almost got in two fights that night. First, uh, some random British dude walked over um, and started talking to uh, my boy's girlfriend, basically, at the time. And we couldn't hear shit because it was super loud and there was all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, He, I know he shook my hand. And then the next thing I know, my buddy's trying to kill him. So at that point, we uh, removed my buddy from from the area and... uh, basically mo- moved on de-escalated the entire we, situation we de-escalated the situation and then another time or basically that same night um whenever we were in my room uh after the fact i was basically about to go and go to bed and then i hear some commotion outside and i go outside my other best friend who is uh currently being screamed at by this other dude who's just a complete douchebag and he's been like that the whole time that we were there um he was trying to pick a fight with my buddy, and they were trying to pick a fight with each other, so we're all standing, like, I'm standing in front of this guy who's trying to get to my friend, and it, at one point, he points at me, he's like, you ain't, he's, he points at me, he's like, you ain't shit, and he points at my friend, and you ain't shit, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, next thing I know, I turned back, because after they had said that, my boy was like, trying to jump over people and stuff next thing i know i turn left and another guy from my company 
bounced this guy's head off the wall. <laughs> That's intense. <laughs> yeah, and after that, after that, that was pretty much the end of it. Some NCOs came out and like put everyone back in the yeah. rooms. Yeah, I, I, um, I can see where this is going. But yeah, that it, I just thought it was funny. And then later on, we asked him, "Hey, uh, why did you why did you hit the guy?" And he was like, "Well, I heard uh, he was talking crap on." uh raptor and his buddy so i had to <laughs> i just I had, can't stand for that I just had to do what i had he walks to do. out he walks out he's like yeah he's like there's two hits here my fist against your face in this in your face against the floor uh, uh we're back on youtube again who knows what who knows what happened there oh well yeah we got it going now well that was really interesting yeah uh, that's that's my that's all the fighting experience i have in life <laughs> well I have a very extensive, uh, you know, background in fighting, whether it be immaturely or maturely, you know, whatever. Look at well, you getting the grin. <laughs> yeah, well, it all started from a very young age. My cousin and I would often find ourselves at odds, and Same. our way of disputing it was, you know, to go and wrestle around, and whoever came out on top was, you know, sort of the victor. And as that progressed and as we got older, it went into us watching, like we had started watching UFC and whatnot. So I'm out there, you know, with him rolling around, pretty much destroying each other, choking each other out to the point where we were passing out, you know. And then from there, it was, we were throwing punches and blooding each other up. And I'd gotten into numerous fights in high school. Like I can't even count how many. Oh, you were that kid. Oh yeah, I was. But I. You were that. Kid. I defended the kids that were not able to defend themselves. I was the uh, the anti-bully, the Robin Hood, so to speak. About and stealing. then, yeah. Instead of stealing, it's just beating people. Up. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it was very justifiable. <laughs> it was very justifiable in in my defense. And then after I found out that I had a fist of stone, I pretty much got into boxing, and from and that was at, that was at the age of fifteen. So from I did I did boxing for I mean, God five six years. I did I had a couple amateur fights. I went five one and two. And then. The more that me and my group of friends got into watching UFC, I found a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym, which was pretty much a couple blocks down from my boxing gym. So me and my cousin started going there, and we started rolling around doing doing some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and then they implemented uh ufc like mma training in with that so they started going into striking and and rolling around on the ground which would entail to wrestling and brazilian jiu-jitsu so, and then i got into mma for a little while and now for the past uh, i want to say six years i've been training muay thai with a friend of mine who is a muay thai fighter that actually is from america and he actually went over to thailand and fought and trained with with thai fighters so that has been Meow. quite the uh <laughs> the experience going from not knowing what the hell muay thai is to where i'm at now it's been pretty crazy i just want to know how i become a real life thai fighter i am nowhere even close i like the empire Meow. and they're Stop. thai fighters <laughs> So, Not quite a lot of people much. don't understand how old hand-to-hand -hand combat is. And I wrote this down <laughs> a while ago. Uh, and so, hand-to-hand -hand combat is the most ancient form of fight fighting known, which a lot of people don't I mean, realize. Before weapons, there were fists. <laughs> well, yeah, well, <laughs> a lot that of makes sense, right? Yeah, well, uh, if you think about it, people were using, like, Cavemen were using tools. I'm pretty sure. Rock. Cain and Abel was. Uh, yeah, Cain. Yeah, <laughs> we can start as early as that, as Cain is the first murderer. Well, yeah, well. He actually used a knife, though. 
or a bone of a goat, I believe. Something like that. Don't quiz me! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, you know, like, it, it don't really tell, I, I think it's as old as human history. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, the humans have been fighting each other since humans existed. Yours, you rock bigger than mine. <laughs> I dig. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I know you. We fight now. <laughs> Many cultures have deep, deep-rooted, uh, roots related to close combat during, dating back as far as 1020 B- BCC to 256 BCE from the soldiers in China training undarmed combat in the Zhao dynasty also going back to ancient Greece and Rome where they used forms of strikes holds and biting and gouging some of some of the what your phone is uh, affecting the mic quality I believe oh I gotta get, just I gotta, lower it a little bit. I'm gonna get some grounded cables to reduce that. But oh. Continue, Blackbeard. Oh, since the the first sporting combat event would include the gladiators in Rome, and in medieval tournaments such as sword fighting, jousting, the major technological advances such as the use of gunpowder and firearms, trench warfare led to many hand-to-hand fight fighting. Using the body and bayonets. What so, are, oh, I'd like a lance, please. Sword. Well, it just goes <laughs> to a, show. A lance with a sword on the end. Raptor basically has a lance. I do. For his AK. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just goes to show that even with all the technology that we ha- still that we have today, and as it's grown, people still revert back to this primal way of beating the shit out of each other and Dex- trying Dexterity my fist doesn't run out of ammo <laughs> uh, yeah well, hey i well, mean think li- of it this way i mean you're it, yeah. you're in a close quarters combat with, with some or you're in a close quarters room with someone and you're both trying to like shoot each other and you both run out of ammo and don't have time to reload what are you what are you doing you're either reaching for your knife i pull you're reaching for your fist gun but you don't even need to reach for your fist <laughs> your fist is always there <laughs> exactly and, sure, sure and, i mean <laughs> I mean, that definitely can happen. You could come around a corner, like, whenever... Maybe you're in a home defense situation, and you're coming around a corner, and the guy's right there, and he gra- he pushes your, your muzzle out of the way. What are you going to do? Are you prepared to, to deal with something like that? That's why this knowing combatives and stuff like that is important. Knowing how to defend yourself without a firearm is, at least at a minimum, enough to get away from the people that are trying to hurt you. And so then you can get, pull again, get positive control of your weapon, and utilize your weapon. That's what the biggest thing. Fifteen feet. That's, you, that's 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 what you need to know. Fifteen feet. That is, if they if anybody is within fifteen feet of you, somebody that has any remotely experience in fighting, can close that gap and be on top of you before you can even draw your your firearm. And that Probably. is a significant gap between one another. Yeah, and if you have no hand-to-hand combat experience, but you have all of the firearm experience in the world, they gonna make a difference. I, yeah, if they can get if if they can get to you before you're able to draw or bring your weapon up, that's it for you. Well, I think this 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 all really greatly sums up what the entire concept of combatives would be, and that is physically overpowering your adversary. And just in that situation there, uh, where the person's within 15 feet of you, and they just run at you full force and get you before you can get the firearm out is physical overpowerment and that that completely negates any mechanical advantage yes that's that's exactly what i was going to say that and any skill that you like any skill proficiencies so let's let's put this home defense scenario to to a little bit more light here so you turn this corner and there's your intruder right there and you might have your gun barrel pointed at him or your handgun barrel pointed right at him and all he's going to do is grab your hand and push it to grab it and push it to the side and then what He's probably going to take your hand, bend it back so that your hand hurts, so that you loosen your grip on that firearm. You either drop it or he grabs it, and then now he has control of it. He has to make it past the cannon full of grape <laughs> shot first, just so, as the founders intended. <laughs> <laughs> and that, so, all, that whole that whole thing with you know training and combatives like that, this goes into your your psyche too. Where if the more you train in combatives, the less of a the time to react goes down because you will have 
muscle memory. A, a plethora it, it, of potential moves you could well, make Well, it's a, just your fight or flight sense will be desensitized to where you won't even have to think about it. If somebody's attempting to hurt you, you're not going to think about like, oh, am I going to hurt this person or whatever. It's just going to be second nature to you to where you pop them in the freaking face. Whoa. So a quote that I actually heard recently that I really like, it was from, uh, I know I've talked about them before, Yes Theory. Um, they who they do a lot of like go out of your comfort zone type thing and stuff like that. But so the one guy in your Siri just did a halo jump for the first time. And, um, that's awesome. Yeah. And that, he's that, a civilian awesome. and they're quite honestly, they're like a liberal group, which is fine. They can, they can do that. I, I just like their content, but, um, so they do a halo jump and he's training basically with like the red bull, halo athlete guy like okay. he's part of the red bull air force type all of that um and he he gave him a pep talk basically saying because he he had messed up something on um his exit from the plane and he was giving him a pep talk and he was basically saying you can either take the the intensity of the action that you're doing like kind of like you're jumping out of plane so what you're doing, your mind can be going like all over the place, super fast. You're, you're taking the, you're taking on the intensity of the action you're doing instead of internalizing that and kind of slowing all of that down to maybe the, the length of a breath. You're, you can either, uh, he said it a lot better. I can't think of the exact words you, he used, but it was basically taking the, the intensity of the action that you're doing or the intensity that you decide how that is by your training, knowing what you're supposed to do, taking You mitigate it. how much stress is actually yeah. being thrust upon you. Yeah, and just by knowing stuff. Yeah, and, knowledge is power. And not letting the actual event take over your train of thought, basically. Because the, the fight can be going a mile a minute. But you can slow that down in your brain and pick it apart as you're doing it. Your average fight lasts around 15 seconds. Yeah. That's your average. You but know, it might feel like a, it, oh, might, it feels it'll like, feel like hours, especially if you're on the ground. If you're oh, on yeah. the ground rolling around with somebody, it feels like forever. Welcome to Adrenaline. Yes. I mean, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So, But if I was to give anybody any advice on which disciplines or for anybody that's needs to know which would be the fighting styles you know to learn would be your three cores like you have these three cores are super important would which would be your wrestling your brazilian jiu-jitsu and your boxing because that covers everything like if if you're just starting out and you're wondering which one do i start with where do i go you know how do I get into this? How do I, you know, utilize my body to be the most efficient and well-rounded? Those are the three that I'm going to tell you to go to go through. Because wrestling, it covers your ground game. It gets you more comfortable on the ground. Boxing, you're going to be comfortable standing up, having to sit, stand there and bang with somebody. And Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu helps out is... along with your wrestling was. No, it's. Uh, I mean, I was just gonna say Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is basically how you end fights. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was gonna say this it's, is. <laughs> it's more about the method of overpowerment. This is using joint locks, choke holds, you know, different throws and different mounts and things like that to your advantage. You're using leverage points. You're basically just folding them. Yeah, folding you're folding them like an old wallet. <laughs> you're folding their clothes while they're still in them. <laughs> <laughs> and this and this what what brazilian jiu-jitsu does is even solidifies your comfortability on the ground whether that be on your back or on top of somebody because on your back in brazilian jiu-jitsu is the dominant position whether you whether you believe it or not yeah. because there are so many submissions that you can do from your back yeah you have like if you have somebody in half guard like you are completely in control of them yeah because you have you control their hips yeah and and i mean you that's that. where a lot of your powers derive from yeah. and the, it, really if i put you in my half guard your only option really is to try and beat you, know, you or choke you out that and 
possibly try and just stand up and posture up, but yeah, I'm gonna then you have then all you're the, gonna be on you me. have all my weight on, yep. on your hips and it it wears you down. Whereas you're just relaxing on your back, I go just chilling. slam him. I mean that's an option. <laughs> I, mean, I mean you gotta basically like flat deadlift. Yeah, I mean you have to be strong, <laughs> and that's part. Of, I mean part of this is also fitness. Like you're just general fitness, not just fighting fitness, but your overall health and fitness. If you're maybe on the more overweight side and stuff, maybe you should look into some late workouts or something, or change your diet or something like that. Like me included, I I am in the area where I would say I should probably start working out more or stuff like that. I would say getting into combatives, strength isn't everything. Technique takes a lot of that away. Like it, Technique is the leverage point versus being this brute, strong, you know, alpha berserker. guy. Yeah, berserker <laughs> dude, yeah. Where technique is, you know, I'll get into that, where with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, you know, it – it is that key factor to where you don't have to be super strong. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think I think a lot of fighting is, I mean, don't get me wrong, being strong helps you with your fighting. Force. It is, oh, it, it's I, a I good wanna, advantage, but. I'd say, it's, I'd say fighting as a whole is a more mental thing because you have to really, I don't want to say plan out because you got to plan out fast. It's but processing it, a lot of things at really fast pace and, like, and you have nanoseconds like blitz to, to yes. and knowing how to mitigate a situation like if somebody's running out you have to know how to maneuver to to put yourself in the best situation so and, i i think a lot of it is mentally preparing yourself for such a for different circumstances yeah it's all depend upon the position you're in in the position that your opponent is in and where you want to be se- literally <laughs> nanosecond yeah. thoughts of like how can i get them in this position what can i do to prevent them from getting me in this position like <laughs> just like, just like, just how do i stop them get... from beating my face in <laughs> essentially in the dumbest way to put it possible yes how do i not go to sleep right now because <laughs> they're really trying to put me to sleep the biggest factor for a lot of people in fights is is their cardio like if if i had to tell somebody what to work on to get themselves ready to train in combatives or and then train to you know if they plan on getting into the competitives you know com, you know combat sports cardio cardio is everything and that, that makes total sense yeah, you, you might be fighting the strongest guy in the room but if he has very little cardio work and you have a fuck ton you he's gonna run time. out of breath yeah. way faster than you will yeah. you'll be able to out, out, out strength him in the long run yeah I'm, I'm right with you that makes complete sense to me i've always been more into the endurance of muscles rather than brute strength anyways because i don't know it just it's always benefited me more to I, be I, able to endure longer I, than I would think, lift more i think it's more practical i think so too for what we are trying to push out yes if for you know the training style that we're trying to to push out to the public is definitely the the More way to do endurance it endurance space yeah, yeah endurance space because i don't know how often you need you to wanna... lift a car well <laughs> well being strong does have its advantages which you know which leads me into i want to give a little background history on on all these kind of your uh more popular disciplines so starting off with wrestling uh wrestling is one of the oldest forms of combat known today dating back as far as the babylon and egyptian times going back to fifteen thousand years cave drawings showing wrestlers using the same holds that we still use today uh during the during the Middle Ages, it, from the fifth to the fifteenth century, wrestling was a popular, was very popular among royal families the, the, in France, Japan, England. Also, early British settlers found wrestling but to uh, found wrestling to be a popular activity in military exercises. Uh, American, uh, American, um, oh, is it? Yeah, it's buzzing again. Up, yeah. Uh, some of the different, uh, colonial festivities and different, 
Native American cultures have also found wrestling to be a training exercise for them whenever they were fighting the uh, Red Coats and the Americans. I, I just like to point out that you skip like you skip <laughs> like a solid third of that. I know. Well, yeah, I know. Well, it's kind of hard to read on my phone, and I need glasses. Yeah. So and sorry you can't have the phone up too much. Like I said, it, it keeps yeah, uh, it kind of impedes yeah, my. Uh, it, it, for, like I said, for some well, the, I mean, it's it's how sensitive the audio equipment is. It's yeah. pick, it's picking up the interference coming off of that. On it, I mean, th- there's a lot to go into this in terms of like like we said, hand to hand combat or fighting with your hands is as old as humans history as far back as it goes. History and. I mean, I don't know about you, Blackbeard, but I don't know if you should necessarily read the whole histories. I think we should uh, put that on to our viewers. Okay, to... well, yeah, we can put it out in the Discord. And oh, yeah, can... we definitely, oh, yeah. Oh, that's a great plug-in! <laughs> that's a great plug Hey, hey, those of you that are listening, if you want to <laughs> learn about the histories of these fighting styles, join our Discord. Discord. Or B-B-I-P. you could B-B-I-P. talk to Blackbeard about it. Like hey. he he is a wealth of information for combatives, hand to hand, beating people up type thing. I mean, he was the Robin Hood of his high school. <laughs> <laughs> so well, then I'll just briefly go over some of the. the you key can yeah things. absolutely yeah. yeah please please do. I just want to know when you're going to teach me how to be a tenth degree black belt so I can flick somebody. And break I'm all by the no means a professional at any one of these. I am very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a a student of all the arts. Oh, of course. And the, the, the point of this episode is just to get across it. Like, this is a key point to, me- to mention when it comes to preparedness. But also, obviously, we don't know everything either. But we want to put this out there as something that our viewers and listeners should really, like, take into consideration and take into... And be interested. Or find just something else to, like, add to their tool belt. Like, everything right. that we've talked about is another thing to add to your tool belt. And, I mean... Sometimes it can be overwhelming because there's a lot of stuff you gotta know how to be a medic. You gotta know how to beat people up. You gotta know how to there, like, reload there is your gun. So much to learn. Yeah, there's tons traits. of things. Well, the thing is, like, we will forever be students. Absolutely, like, th- we will never master any of this. Nobody so that's ever a great will. Point. We're me- we're merely, you... sh- merely shedding the light so that you can see what you. We're shedding the light so that you can see it for yourself. Yes, like. So going on to the whole wrestling thing, like the the strong points that come with with being a wrestler, would be you're very good at taking people to the ground. Like you, like most wrestlers are, kind of your your super strong dudes that are just brute strength. Like that's what a lot of wrestlers are. They're just gorillas because they muscle, they overpower you, they sw- they swarm you and overwhelm you to the point where. They ha- they get you into some sort of hold to where they can take you to the ground, and then they beat you up on the ground. Like, they slam you to the ground, keep you there, and fatigue you to the point to where you cannot get away. Well, th- th- and that goes back into what uh, Raptor said about endurance. Yes. And why that's more valuable. Oh, it is super valuable. And then... Going on with the three cores, I would go to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is super strong on the ground. But like, like I said, if you don't have a rest, some sort of a wrestling background, the whole taking people to the ground sort of is a weak, weak point for you. But what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists are good at, whenever they are on the ground, they are good at keeping you there, maneuvering their body, and getting you into a position to where they can utilize an arm lock, whether it be via you might, arm bar, yeah. Kimura. You, you know. might think you're winning the fight, and you go to the ground, and you're on top of this jujitsu guy, and you pe- beat him off forever, and he's doing some weird like movements with his hands and legs, and all of a sudden your, your arm is night about night. to be super... Yeah. <laughs> And then he whips out the crippler. <laughs> the crippler. <laughs> the nipple crippler. He, <laughs> he does one quick move, and now you're on your back. He's got your your, your arm, arm tied about around your to neck be... And you're not like tied around your neck, but hair. about to be broken. He punches you with your own fist. It's, it's, just, it's <laughs> Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, in my opinion, is probably one of the most useful um, Oh, by far. Crosshair, practices. you okay? I'm having a great time, guys. <laughs> like, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is... 
probably the most common nowadays discipline. I mean, combatives is based on. Yeah. Like everybody has adopted this into their training. Like worldwide. This is a worldwide thing where pretty much every military or police, you know, whatever security force has implemented Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or some sort of form of it. Do you know that for a fact, or are you just like feeding me bullshit? No, no this is this is true. If you're feeding me bullshit, I'm gonna start calling you Joe Biden. I mean, the American oh. the American military uses you Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, and that's really the only military that matters. See, I think the hardest thing for people when it comes to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, though, is that the the methodology behind it is pretty different from everything else you do. Again, like that being on the ground is the dominant position. I think it's it's kind of hard for people to envision that because that's so that's the uncomfortability that's, it very, though. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's uncomfortable because it's different. Yeah, and it, it, it's not normal for somebody to sit there and think, "Okay, I'm on my back." Uh, this is normal, but it's not normal. Like because it's, your psyche does not want to. Because in you want to be standing up style. punching someone. You think of a fight, or at least someone untrained, you think of a fight, you want to be standing up punching someone. That's at least how I, as an untrained person, would think of a fight. Well, like, most people are like I don't want to be on the ground. Can't. I want to be standing up and knocking someone else on the ground. Well, maybe the ground is where you want to be. Yeah, see, like, the way I think about it, as someone who's very, very untrained, I would say, like, being on the ground isn't the worst place to be either if you're the one on your back because your legs are your strongest muscles in the body yeah. well it, well i think it, it, i mean the whole thing literally comes down to leverage yeah it, and you it, can kick it up, is leverage is yeah. the whole game the trying to get combatives is up. extreme leverage right. yeah 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 really right you can kick up with your legs but you can't exactly like if you're on top of someone <laughs> if you're on top of someone you can't kick down on them right because you're using well, your legs to support I mean, yourself so much well, I mean, it's kind of hard to, I, I guess, talk and show this in a podcast yeah, I know. form. We will so definitely I... have to make a video. Yeah, oh, I'd well, definitely or... like to go start going to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym. I think that would be fun. It's just I would join you. Very expensive though. Yeah, it's a, it's, a... it's like sixty to eighty bucks a. There is a gym locally a around my area, which is not far for you fellas. Which is, you can do a twenty five dollar walk in for any cl- you know whatever class that they are doing. Or you can do a fifty dollar, and it's three classes, and then it's a hundred dollars a month if you can you can go to as, as many classes as you want. Value, value, can you get value. Belted? Yeah, like you you get trained by professionals. Can you do you get like do you go through up up the the thing of yes. like yes interesting. This is hundred bucks a month is a little steep though. Are you sure about that? Uh, what I, else do you is it worth your life? Stuff? I, I oh, wait. when my sister went through um Wake up. When, when she went through her training um cuz she she's a black belt I don't know if you know that no I didn't yeah um when she went through her training it was like it was like 35 a session to do the training and that was that was sessions? four times a month oh, so okay. if you if it's wait, 100 times weekly. a month if it's if 100 bucks a month and I go every day yeah, how many sessions are there in a month I believe it's every day Pretty, like they have every they have, day? They have classes if it's every day, day then that's value. Oh, that's fucking value. <laughs> yeah. Sign me well, up. It for all that. depends on how much you you weigh the cost or the way that you weigh it in your mind of what it is to you. The benefit if you, if you, of you go you. if you go six times in that month or hundred bucks. Say if you go ten times the month, it's ten bucks a session. I mean, that's worth that. Yeah. I mean, you guys know me. I'm obviously not the strongest guy in the room, and definitely not the largest frame guy in the room. So yeah, that sounds like. A what did I me. say? You don't have to. That Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is. It, yeah, it doesn't exactly. matter. It is all about leverage. It's not about Cause your size. Because look, when you're, when, I'm getting there. That's when you're, a... when you're small, you turn into a spider monkey and you start like. Yeah, I've gotten. Oh I did a soldier of the quarter board, and part of it was combatives. True. And I almost. So I'm just gonna be straight up. I lost all the fights, uh, all the combatives fights. Um, I think I would have uh, won one of them against the football bigger dude. Because I was choking him out, and I thought he tapped, but he didn't. And then he got me over, and at that point, I was like, I thought you tapped. So I was oh, like, that's kind of just a crappy situation. Um, yeah. Rip. But uh, the other guy, who was smaller than me, and I, I mean, at the time, I was a small dude. Um, he, he, he had control of me, basically, as soon as the thing started. Like, he was on top of me. He was like crawling on top of me as it like keeping his body as tight as he could to and that's me that's a very suffocating feeling yeah well it just it just i couldn't do anything i tried to get him off it's me, hard it's yeah it, he just couldn't do anything how so did, how'd that make you feel i mean 
I, I'm not one to to really care how. Well, see, like I'm I'm super competitive. Like, I'm com so no, I'm, I'm competitive. Don't get me wrong, but if I'm not good at something, I'm not going to feel bad about losing to someone. Oh better no, 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 no! I was I was referring to the, you know, in that moment, how did you feel? No, oh, it just it sucked. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> it's very helpless, and that's the thing with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like, you make a lot of people feel that way. If if you have even remotely amount of training with somebody that has no training you can you destroy make, them very you, quickly. oh you make them yeah. feel so small yeah and you can and it doesn't matter the size of the person like they can be six foot four 280 pounds of solid muscle and if they have no idea what the hell they're doing You're you are gonna make you are gonna make them guy. feel their ego is gonna be in check yeah Dude, that's like 80 pounds more than me <laughs> moving on yeah moving on what you got next? to the third core piece would be boxing. Punching people in the face Punching until they people go to sleep. In the face. <laughs> <laughs> now, in boxing, once you learn your combinations, which means your jabs, your uppercuts, your hooks, your overhands, you know, I could go on and on. Once you learn these and you get proficient at it and you get your timing down and you learn how to block, you will be very good at punching people in the face like and this is a super key component to have when in combatives because you can't always you know grab somebody and take them to the ground because they you have may to punch be... them in the face a few times well yeah <laughs> so then they're ready to go to the ground <laughs> You can just you gotta tenderize them. You, yeah, it's like a meat tenderizer. Yeah, they're they're up, they're ready, they're they're plump, and until you punch them in the face four times, and now their brain is uh just not not working the way that it should, and that gives you the opportunity to maybe put your leg down, grab the, their wrist and upper arm, and bring them to the ground. That's right. <laughs> you punch them with their own fist. <laughs> <laughs> and and this well, you, you're not boxing anymore. <laughs> what boxing does so well for in in terms of training is when you get punched in the face you're gonna figure out what your real fight or flight sense is because a lot of people don't like getting punched in the face a lot of people haven't been punched in the face or I don't, that i yeah, mean i've been never been punched in the face seriously anyway like yeah if you haven't really been clocked like where you are rocked to the point where you're kind of stumbling around and you don't know which way is up you're on the verge of getting knocked the fuck out. You will never. When the darkness comes in. Yeah, it, 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 that actually happens. I'm speaking from yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, many many years ago, but I still remember that, of course. Yeah, like it, it is something. Whenever you do your first time that you actually get clocked in the face, you remember it. Like I remember the first time that I've ever got knocked the fuck out. Oh, dude, out. I could actually like. If, like if I had any any artistic ability here, I could actually sit and draw you the scenery of where it was because I it's very clearly in your, it's remember it. In your oh, yeah. brain. I remember the first time I got punched in the face on a school bus. Was that was that actually or was it was it that same? Yeah, uh, it was that same time. Was it like go to yeah. sleep, punch in the face? Or no, just like someone was holding that. <laughs> jab. No, it was one of the. It was <laughs> like a jolting. <laughs> yeah, it was like a. It was a jab. Like it wasn't like this like, full. Like, yeah, here, buddy. That's, that's what it was. That's what it was. I've ever been I'm full punch on you in the face. Yeah, mine was mine. Mine was, mine was like a go to sleep. Like whole <laughs> hey, body major. clock. Yeah. yeah. Not. And and uh, you will learn fluidity with your punches. That's a big word. I didn't even know you knew that word. If I'm being honest. <laughs> wow. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's so mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, me and you first on the mats. So, oh, there you go. So, yeah. Oh, you so, just signed your note. <laughs> Oh. I think to uh, bring this all together, uh, boxing helps you helps you learn how to fight this on, while you're standing This like, also helps you keep distance yeah, between that too, somebody. Spacing. This is very important because you don't want somebody getting in your face. Like this, throwing, use, utilizing a jab is super crucial because this creates space between you and them. And if you connect with it, Jaw, it jungles their their brain to where they don't know what the hell's going on it for a split second or you might create just enough space and allow yourself just some enough amount of time to draw your weapon yeah yeah it goes into that too like if so 
slap shots coming at me, and I don't want him to get close to me. I jab him in his nose. His head tilts back. Bam. That is probably a whole two seconds that I can probably step back and draw my firearm and blast him right in his chest. But, yeah. So, boxing definitely helps uh, the your spacing and your standing up fighting, like fisticuffs type thing. Then, um, wrestling helps you bring people to the ground and keep people on the ground. And Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is how you basically make them stop fighting you on yeah, the ground. You, this is what finishes the fight on the ground. And then, if I was to jump into anything else for training for somebody that gets a little bit of any one of these three, and they want to jump into something that utilizes their legs a little bit more, I would say Muay Thai or some sort of kickboxing because Muay Thai is super crazy like it they, it is the art of eight limbs so which means your fists your elbows your knees and your feet your legs which being able to kick somebody in the face really changes the game or knowing how to kick somebody in the face in the chest in the legs like you take somebody's leg you leg kick somebody enough times it takes their legs away from where they cannot walk they they can't have they can't have a good center of balance so you can utilize your wrestling or your brazilian jiu jitsu from that point by far the most effective stand up is definitely muay thai like that is the most dangerous because you get somebody into a tie clinch and you catch a knee to the face i'm sorry you're you catch it flush, you're going you're going night night. You're stoned. You died. You died. And I I would definitely for anybody that has any somewhat sort of experience in fighting to move on to a discipline of some sort. Another discipline. Like like say you're a karate guy. Branch out. Go into wrestling, kickboxing, boxing, like don't stay stagnant in one discipline because you're only hurting yourself. And, and then when the dude breaks into your house because he thinks your house is a band, or he thinks nobody's at your house because you're actually conservative, you turn your lights off, and he comes around the corner, and you're like, I'll have you know that I know every form of hand to hand combat ever <laughs> taught by any race ever. It's like, you just walked down the wrong, you just picked the wrong house, fool. Okay, Steven, <laughs> Steven Seagal. Which that dude is a shh. He just goes like He's this. Just, phony. He just goes like this and like taps right in your shoulder and like I said, all your the vault gives you the Vulcan grip. Yeah, but the Vulcan. But at the same time, it's like with the might of a thousand suns. <laughs> but <laughs> palm. I think uh, with that, that's a good place to uh, end our end our show for tonight. Yeah, we're running about an hour and a half. I think. Uh, so, hour and fifteen. I think we're at right now. Uh, yeah, hour and fourteen. We just crossed it. Boom. But if you found anything that we've uh, made here, or brought to light, uh, interesting or informative, or made you want to go look up some some stuff about combatives and uh, fighting, definitely hit us up about your research on the Discord. Yeah, check out our Discord while we're still on Discord. <laughs> while we're still on Discord. <laughs> Again. Keep an eye on that because we may be changing. We'll yeah, see. we may we may change this word due to the more recent Microsoft purchase. I just am curious when Microsoft's going to hit the uh, when Microsoft's officially going to become a monopoly and then they get forced to be broken up. Whenever they buy Disney. Oh God! <laughs> but we have, like we said, we have our socials: YouTube, Instagram, all the podcast platforms. Whatever you're listening to, we greatly appreciate you. Please uh, give the video a like. Send a comment if you have something you want to say, and subscribe if you want to see more. Yeah, please share this uh, to your friends, family. We're trying to get the word out, as always. But that's that's all I have. You guys got anything else, Dad? I would I say go to your local uh, shop, you know, local place that teaches you one of these uh, disciplines and get the training. Get some information. Walk in and be like, give me training. If anything, if honestly, if anything, just ask. Hey, I, I'm interested in getting some uh, training. Well, that's where everything always starts with the question. So I like questions. Yeah. But with that, I'm not going to leave you on a question. No, I'm not So either. stay vigilant. Wake up and stay vigilant. Stay valiant. Do something. 
Yeet. Reet. <laughs> Takes a fat rip before.